Amen. They're angels. Angels are ministering spirits sent to minister far. 1963, I was conducting a meeting in South Texas, actually in Houston, Texas. Eight weeks in one church. Well, one week I, I called for a special time of prayer. I said, we're not going to have any singing. We're just going to pray. No teaching. And I might give a little, little direction, you know, just to, to get us headed in the right direction. We're going to pray. And if you don't, if you are not going to pray for at least one hour, don't come. I thought that thinned the crowd out. Crowd increased. <laughs> it increased. <laughs> they came to pray. Amen. Well, we prayed Monday and Tuesday. Now, these are just nights here. Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday. We're about Thursday night now. I'm kneeling on the platform. The side of a chair like that praying. I'd been praying for some time in the spirit. Incidentally, I'm going to teach on prayer for a couple of mornings, and then we'll get off on faith after that. And so I'm praying in the spirit, in other tongues. And uh, just about finished my hour. And I'm uh, actually kneeling there singing quietly to myself in other tongues. And I don't know why I opened my eyes, but I opened my eyes. When I did, I'm in the spirit. I saw Jesus standing there. Well, you see, Jesus has a spiritual body, resurrected flesh and bone, but a spiritual body. I'm seeing into the realm of spirits. See? I saw Jesus standing there behind the chair, or oh, maybe a couple of feet. And then I saw an angel standing just slightly behind him and a little further over. Jesus is about five feet eleven, six feet tall. That angel, I mean, his head was right up against the ceiling. He must have been nine feet tall or eleven, I don't know, somewhere. I mean, he looked like he is three feet taller than Jesus. Big angel, tall, I meant. And Jesus began to talk to me. I had been praying about three different things. I was one thing that just got word that day concerning my sister that it was discovered that she had cancer. And so I'm praying about that. Jesus said to me, between what I will do and the doctors will do, I'll give her five more years. She lived exactly five more years and went home to be with the Lord. Amen. Thank God for what the doctors can do. Thank God for what Jesus can do. Sometimes they work together, you know. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he talked to me about another area of ministry that I was praying about. And then he ceased to speak. I would look at the angel. When I'd look at him, he'd open his mouth like he's going to say something. And I'd look back to Jesus. When I look back to Jesus... Angel didn't say anything. So now then, both of them are standing there with their mouth shut. And I said to Jesus, who is that fella? He said, that's your angel. I said, my angel? Yeah, your angel. Do I have an angel? Yeah. He said, didn't you ever read in my word? When they brought little children to me, you know, for me to bless them and lay hands upon them. On one occasion, as one of the gospel writers said, Jesus made the statement that their the children, their angel is ever before my father's face. He said to me, you don't lose your angel because you grow up. There is anything in the Bible that says you do, is it? No, the word of God said here that angels are ministering spirits. Sent to minister. Now. You're about to enter into a place in the spirit that you haven't been before. So be keen in the spirit and be swift to obey. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I see it. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's trying to set us up, build a foundation to minister on. 
Glory to God to set us up for a manifestation of the Spirit that we haven't seen here before. Or a greater manifestation, maybe I should say. Amen. So I said to Jesus, who is that fellow? That's your angel? My angel? Yeah, your angel. Jesus said, he has a message for you from Almighty God. Well, I'm a stickler for the word. Bless our darling hearts and stupid heads. Sometimes we think we're, stu we're really a stickler for the word and we aren't. I said, well, now I never read in the Bible where it said, for as many as are led by angels, they are the children of God. It said, for as many as are led by the Spirit. And then beside that, you was talking to me. Why couldn't you give me a message from Almighty God? Actually, what he did say was from Almighty God. You think Jesus got angry with me about that? Now he smiled so sweetly. And he said, didn't you ever read in my word where an angel, Peter, you know, was in prison. They, they'd already beheaded John. But an angel came in the nighttime. Praise God and woke him up. Escorted him out of jail, didn't he? Didn't you ever read, he said, the great revival, after the great revival that Philip had in Samaria? An angel of the Lord told him, go down in the way of Gaza. He said to me, didn't that angel give him direction? Tell him what to do. I said, he sure did. He said, when Paul was shipwrecked on his way to Rome, shipwrecked, all hope that they should be saved was gone. They'd thrown all the merchandise overboard. Suddenly Paul stood forth in their midst and said, sirs, an angel, everybody say angel, angel. an angel of the God whose I am and whom I serve has stood by me this night. Who stood by him? An angel. Oh, praise God. Of the God whose I am and whom I serve has stood by me this night. And he told him what the angel said. The angel gave him direction. The angel told him what to do. The ship will be lost. But if you'll do what I tell you, the life of every man will be saved. Wherefore, Paul said, Sirs, I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Amen. He said, didn't that angel? I said, he sure did. I said, he sure did. Praise God. Amen. Amen. In the 10th chapter of Acts, th there was a man by the name of Cornelius. He is a Jewish proselyte. He is walking in all the light he had. But about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, one afternoon, an angel appeared to him. The Bible said an angel. Didn't he give him direction? The angel couldn't tell him how to be saved. God ordained that men should preach the gospel. But he said, send men to Joppa. Amen. And inquire in the house of one Simon the tanner for Simon Peter, who when he is come will tell thee words whereby thy house will be. I said, O oh Lord, I repent. I thought I was a stickler for the word. Yes, it says there again and again. Well, weren't they ministering? Weren't these angels ministering for these people? Hallelujah. And so I looked to the angel then. When I looked to him, he opened his mouth and said, I am sent from the presence of Almighty God to tell you. Now, now, our ministry began to grow. Now, I'm talking about, you see, 1963. And we were just operating, you know, offices out of the garage and the den of our home. And we needed room. We needed more. And so we're considering, you know, building an office building. Uh, because the, the property that we were on was residential, but it had been rezoned all for business, and so we could do that. Amen. We had a real deep lot. Uh, uh, but during this meeting there in Houston, one of the businessmen came to me and said, Brother Hagin, I'm representing, and he mentioned two other businessmen, three businessmen, said, come and go with me. I went with me, with him. He showed me uh, an office suite. He said, now, we three will underwrite there. We, we'll lease this. If you'll move your offices and headquarters here, we'll lease this. We pay it. We'll furnish all the equipment, all the desk and everything. We'll hire you two secretaries. We pay their salaries. Boy, I had been praying about this. I thought this is the answer. Man, this is the answer, you see. Amen. He said, I'm sent from the presence of Almighty God to tell you not, mention all three men's names. For they have an in ulterior motive. They'd get the ministry in their hands. I want you to be the head of it. I'm still the head of it. Somebody said, I thought Ken Jr.'s running everything. He don't do anything without asking me. <laughs> Amen. Anything. 
I mean, I mean, somebody needs a pencil. They know you're asking me if they need a pencil. They need a pencil. But I mean anything, anything, anything of any importance, anything concerning. He'll come to me and ask me, Dad, what do you think about this? What, what, what about this? Amen. Until he gets a stamp of approval, he don't move. Amen. So you, whoever you are, bless your darling heart and stupid head. <laughs> you just shut your mouth. I'm, I'm, I'm still the head. I want you to know that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And that's what, that's what the angel said. I'm sent from the presence of Almighty God. Uh, amen. I want you to be the head. Now, he went on to say, in three months' time, you will have, well, about three and a half, almost four. You will have so many th- extra, besides what it took to operate, so many thousands of dollars. Set up your own office. You be the head. Well, when the time came, like he said at the end of that, I had $15 over the amount he said. He just gave me the round figure. I had so many thousands plus $15. Set up my own office. And then another man had come. You know, with the, back there then we had those seven inch reel to reel tapes. And we had tape, got into that. And he said to me, and this man had come, he worked for a company, had all the best material there is, best equipment. If you'll let me, I'll reproduce the tapes for you. Furnish the reel, furnish the tapes. All free. Then therefore, you know, if you sell them, then everything's clear. I was hiring somebody. I was, you know, farming them out and getting them reproduced. He said, I'm sent from the President of Almighty God to tell you not to call his name. For he has an ulterior motive. I want you to do it. Praise God. Well, we've done it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And have produced over 40 million tapes. Hallelujah. Most all of them in circulation. We have printed over 66 million books. I mean, here in the United States, that's not foreign. That's just here. Many more million over there. By, by the direction of the Lord. By, by hearing from heaven. By seeing into the spirit realm. By hearing what God's saying. By the ministry of angels. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.